Good morning, everybody. Tracy at TRCast here, and um, hopefully I'm live and you can hear me and see me. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Julie is here as well. She Hello. is, she's, she'll be looking out for your comments and monitoring and um, keeping us company while we do this demo. And um, we're super happy to see you. We missed last week because I was out of town. Um, and I'm not sure if I'll be demoing any more um, of our renewal designs, possibly. I have to kind of go back through them and see, look at the, the jewelry designs we did for that product launch and see if there's any others that I really think you guys will want to see. But in the meantime, today, we are, find the camera, we are demoing our um, Monstera Trio bracelet, which is a three-strand bracelet made with um, two millimeter leather cord and we some of our we oh, hold on. Our our find. Which is a three was that you julie yes you got it okay um one of us always uh at some point has to mute the facebook stream but uh that's fine you guys are kind of used to that by now huh so anyway, um, this bracelet includes the Monstera buttons that came out with our um, renewal collection, which are just have been phenomenally successful. I don't know, maybe people were just waiting for those Monstera buttons um, because they've been selling really well. And it also includes many of the components um, that are from our Leathercraft collection. Um, so those are components that are made specifically to work with um, cord designs, could be leather cord, could be anything that's a kind of a larger diameter. Um, so we have some, we have some connector bars, we have barrel beads, we have crimpable end caps, and you guys have seen, oh, and did I show the the three hole separator bar, I did. Um, you guys have seen some of this stuff in other designs if you've been watching the Tierra Cast live demos. So um, it's possible we saved the best renewal collection design for last, but like I said, I'll have to look and see what other um, designs we have in that collection that still might be good to demo. So I'm going to switch my camera and get you guys the, the work surface view and um, in terms of variation, what I was interested in doing today is showing um, just some other ideas using this um, basic design. This um, design is one that I did early on for the, as I was working with the, with the design concept, and I just used a different color of leather. And I just love this version. We decided to, photo, to photograph the, um, the one with the brown cord, just because that's a much more common material that people use. But there are so many colors of leather cord available out there. Um, th just love that purple one. I wanted to show some of the other colors. And I'm also gonna be using some different buttons. And I've only experimented so far with our bamboo buttons. And I'm also gonna demo this variation. I braided the um, strands at the sides and I thought that came out kind of fun. Um, and so I did try some round, the round bamboo buttons on this one. And what I think I discovered is, is that the, um, the design works better with those buttons if they're kind of irregularly shaped. I think it just makes a slightly, a slightly better kind of focal cluster. So um, I think what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna try one with our apple blossom buttons. And I've got a couple different colors of green cord here. Um, the leather cord we get is usually from Leather Cord USA and they just have, I don't know if you guys know, they have such an, a huge array of colors and they're different leather cords. So I don't know which color, I think maybe this one is called their fern. And I think that that's the one I'm gonna use with the apple blossom buttons. It feels very fresh and springy. It's um, like What's that? To me, it looks like wasabi. Oh, <laughs> wasabi and apple blossom buttons. I think that's okay. I think we can still go be okay with that combo. So I think I'll, um, uh, well, I'm gonna measure this time, guys. I know I don't always do that, but I am gonna measure. I need 24 inches of cord 
and you guys can't necessarily see it on the screen, but I've got my handy dandy ruler taped to the front of my work table here. here. Um, so 24 inches of cord. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut that in three equal pieces. So each one will be eight inches. And that's plenty of material for making a, um, a, uh, a range of sizes. So um, you'll be we'll be trimming material off at the end, but you can see that starting with eight inches is probably plenty for um, most bracelet sizes. So the first thing I want to do is thread one of these little three hole bars. And um, we wanted to make sure and point out that we have kind of a range of uh, large hole components that work with leather. I've just got a few sprinkled on the bench here. Maybe I'll pick them up so you guys can see. What I'm using for the um, for this design is a three hole bar. I think it's a uh, five millimeter. The nugget bead that we based it on, which is this. Yep. Um, originally, we had these nugget beads in seven millimeter and five millimeter with large holes. And so we used that, those nugget designs to create three hole bars as well. So we have a seven millimeter version and we have the five millimeter version. And then we have another, um, we have several um, large hole spacers that work with cord really well, but specifically with the two millimeter hole, this is another one of our um, spacers. It is called our five millimeter faceted large hole spacer. And then of course we've got our crimpable um, barrel beads. We're using the six by two millimeter barrel bead and crimp end for this design, but we also have that in four. You guys have seen those demo projects with that before. And then we also have this little um, two hole connector bar that, um, or separator bar, I should say, um, with also with the two millimeter, with the two millimeter hole. So that's just a few of the other types of um, large hole components we have that works real well with cord designs. So back to the, the bracelet, I'm going to line up. Actually, I'm going to do this first. I'm going to cut each of these ends just at a slight angle that will just make the stringing a little bit easier. And then I'm going to thread all three strands through this one of these spacer bars. And then I'm going to pull those through, I don't know, maybe four, three and a half, four inches. All right, the next thing I'm going to do on the other side is string on, actually, I'm going to back up and I'm going to keep working with this side for a little bit. As usual, I didn't read the, I wrote directions for this, but did I read them carefully before I started? No, I didn't. <laughs> That's the lesson you're going to take forever to learn. It's true because I tend to just start winging it when I'm, when I'm starting to put together a design. It's because you're I such think, a pro. Ah, I think it might be better if we have one of these barrel beads to kind of help thing, keep things in place before I put the buttons on. Tracy, I'm pretty sure you said it, um, but the um, faceted bead that you showed and the nuggets also come in a regular hole. It's true. Julie's pointing out that, um, oops, oh, there, there it is. Um, these, all three of these spacers also come in a regular hole. Um, so those holes are about maybe one millimeter. And this one actually comes in a smaller size as well. It's th uh, three millimeter, I think. All right, so I've got um, the six by two millimeter barrel bead on there and I've got my, my little um, spacer bar on there. And now I'm going to put, um, I'm gonna start stringing my buttons on. And again, I'm gonna cut the ends so that, just to make the stringing a little bit easier.
you know, we missed last week. And when Julie and I first got on the Zoom together this morning and we're kind of getting ready to go live, she's like, oh my gosh, it feels like I haven't done this for two weeks. <laughs> and I'm feeling like that too. <laughs> Not that two weeks is a very long time, but it took a minute to, for us to get to get uh, back up to speed with all the technology. And you know, there, there you'll notice that um, these buttons are a real snug fit on this leather. We do make our buttons deliberately with kind of roomy shanks so that um, so that you can use it with a variety of materials. Um, so usually they fit two millimeter cord really nicely, and it's actually a really nice, um, it, the, if the cord is a snug fit through the shank on these buttons, um, that's a bonus for this design because it'll help to keep the, um, the buttons in place better. Now I'm asking if the, um, if the barrel bead is crimpable, and yes, yes, yes. Yes. Are you going to um, crimp it a little bit? You're going to crimp it for this design. Yeah. Uh, the Yes, I'll be crimping the ends. Hold on. I, I can talk or I can get this cord pulled through. <laughs> apparently, apparently, I can't do both at the same time. Um, yeah, there's some crimping here, especially the, the ends. These, um, what I was saying about the, the fit of the buttons on this cord is it is there's always some variation in the thickness of your leather cord. You buy two different packages of a two millimeter round leather cord and there may be significant variation. So this is a pretty snug fit, which is good. I just got to get these pulled up next to the um, separator bar. And then I can start kind of playing with placement like where I want them to sit relative to the other buttons. Do we prefer the um, buttons to be a little snug than to be a little loose? Yes, um, it's better um, for this design because when I what I discovered when I was working on this one is that these um, buttons were much looser. This particular cord was a little bit thinner and so the buttons were sliding around a lot. I actually ended up putting some E6000 on the back to keep them in place. But again, I discovered while I was making this one that the round buttons, I wasn't as happy with the way those looked as a little kind of focal cluster. I think I like the irregular ones better. So I've got my three buttons on there. I'm going to string on the second separator bar. And I'm loving this color. I think it's going to be, it's very sweet with the, with the apple blossom buttons. I, I don't know what color it really is, but it is really green on my screen. It's called um, fern. Yeah, it doesn't look like a fern to me. <laughs> it's a very fresh, brand new fern. <laughs> yeah, still uncurling. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. So getting my little buttons in place, getting my separator bars in place. And I can kind of spread these out to the separator bars or keep them tucked close together. Kind of designer's choice there. That's looking pretty good. So now I'll string on the second um, six by two barrel beads. Yeah, somebody's saying, um, well, it should be called apple green. Yeah, I think it, you know, it very much is a Granny Smith kind of bright green. Yes. For me. So I think that that's good on this design. Yeah, Lynn said green apple and Kelly said Jolly Rancher green apple. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> Jolly Rancher green apple. <laughs> All right. So I'm liking the placement and I'm situate, situating everything, trying to get everything situated, kind of right in the center of my cords because my next step will be to kind of adjust 
adjust the length for size. So I want these as close to the middle as, as possible. And I'm going, I'm using a toggle clasp and um, the crimpable cord, the crimpable, crimpable end caps. So I want to allow for those components, I want to allow for about an inch and a half. So I'm gonna, um, I'm going to adjust for the length according to that measurement. And I do need to grab a ruler, hold on just a sec. So Lynn is saying she has everything to make this except the three hole spacer bars. And I'm thinking she really could snug those barrel beads up a little closer and um, still make a version. And skip the barrel beads? I um, skip the connector bars? Well, she just doesn't have them. And yeah, even though I, I think they're beautiful, I, she could probably snug those barrels up a little closer, right? I think she could. Yeah. And maybe we'll play with that when we when we do the third one. Let's That's cool. That idea and see how it looks. All right, so um, I've got my... I know I have my fabulous ruler taped to the front, but I wanted an actual movable ruler for this part of it so you guys can see it. So I want to make a seven inch bracelet. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to allow a, an inch and a half for my clasp components. Actually, should it be an inch? Yeah, it needs to be about an inch and a half. Um, so the total length of my bracelet then, well, actually, I'll, I'll do it this way. I'm, placing this so that my focal is right at the center of seven inches. And then I'm gonna take off three quarters of an inch at each end. I'm gonna trim off three quarters of an inch of leather. Cause you know, two, three quarters equals, equals uh, an inch and a half, right? Sure. Sure, Julie says, <laughs> she's like, I'm not doing math right now. <laughs> I believe you, Tracy. Okay. Well, I took off three quarters at one end, but the other end I just measured, um, I looked at the seven and I measured back three quarters of an inch. All right, so now I'm going to tuck the ends of my leather into one of those barrel beads. And um, we've talked about how these, you can use glue with these and you can also just crimp them. And this design is, this cord is gonna be a really nice fit. So I'm just gonna crimp them. I just need to make sure I get them, get them tucked in there. Sometimes it's really cooperative and sometimes it's not. This design you're doing is a great way for people to experiment with mixed metals, uh, especially if they're not particularly comfortable with it because right. you, could, you could have made those ends any, any color. I could. All right, I got to trim the side of one of these cords. Does not want to go in there. That um, leather you're working with is on the fatter side, I suspect. It's a very true two millimeter for sure. But I got it in there good now. And I'm gonna come in with my parallel pliers, which if you've washed it, us at all demo these crimpable components. You know that the parallel pliers are our favorite. You can also crimp these using nylon jaw flat nose pliers. It just can be a little bit slippery, but you can do it. You can definitely do it. And the the nice part about these ones is that they don't mar up the metal as much. And you can also do it with just flat nose pliers. If somebody really doesn't have hand strength, a hammer will work. That's absolutely true, a hammer and a bench block. All right, so I got that one crimped on. I'm gonna put the one on the other side. And I'm kind of pulling on these and kind of straightening everything out before I do that. And what I notice is, look, I've got a little bit of variation in my length. So I'm gonna even that up. And again, trim the edge of one of them just so it makes it easier to get <clears throat> to get them all three in there next to each other. I mean, I guess, Julie, you could even use just the widest part of chain nose pliers. Yeah. 
or um, pewter's pretty soft. Yeah. Yeah, this is working fine too. <clears throat> And I'm giving them a gentle pull to make sure it's secure in there and it feels it feels good. <clears throat> All right. So now I would like to make sure that this is actually kind of nice and even before I start securing anything else. Julie was talking about crimping these. And in this case, it's a pretty snug fit on the leather, but I think I still want to just give them a little bit of crimp so that um, it holds everything. I'm trying to figure out the best place to put this on the ruler. It will keep them from migrating when you wear it also. To migrating, that's a good word for it. And I'm using the ruler to just make sure everything's centered. Yeah, and then I can go ahead and crimp those just a little bit. You don't have to be worried about you know anything falling apart in at this point at this spot in the design you just want to crimp it enough so that they stay in place i think this is looking good i like the wasabi green and the uh and the apple blossoms wasabi i got it i got it named <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll have to talk to michelle about that yeah tell her we want a name change on this particular one uh, okay, so we have a, uh, a viewer who's wondering about ordering. Um, they've ordered from other resellers. I'm going to put a link for an application, but we are wholesale. Mm -hmm. So we do have, you know, we require a tax ID and to see that uh, people are in the business of um, uh, making and selling their products, their designs. And if that's not something that uh, is a good fit for her, actually a wholesale account, um, if that's wow. not her case, these, all of these components are pretty widely available out there. So the, I'm using a toggle clasp um, for this design and the barrel bead components I used is our pewter finish. And we do have some toggle clasps available in that finish. You know, much, much of our silver stuff is so um, fine silver plated, but I chose the one that's a, a pewter finish, so it would go, it would go well with the um, distressed barrel beads. So um, that's it for the apple blossom. Want to try it? I cannot believe how easy that design is that you just I made. Know. It is, it is surprisingly easy. Not necessarily easy to put on, but you know, easy to make. <laughs> And everybody oh, loves that design so much. Yeah, and I did point it out as I was putting on the toggle class, but um, I always like to use one, uh, one jump ring to attach the toggle ring and then two or three to attach the toggle bar. And that's so you can move that toggle bar enough around to get thing to, you know, be able to get it on your wrist unless you have a friend who's just nearby all the time to help you put bracelets on. So. They make bracelet buddies. They make all sorts of uh, gizmos to help you. I've never tried one, but yeah, you're right. So there we go. There's our apple blossom version. I love it. So then the heart version that we're going to try braiding, I'm going to use, I'm not going to use these Monstera buttons. So I'm going to get those out of the way. The heart version that we're gonna braid, I'm gonna use this um, it's kind of a red brown. And let's see. So this is, it. we've not got instructions written for this, but what I'm thinking I need to do because I'm gonna braid these is we, we started with an eight inch, um, three eight inch strands for this one, but I'm gonna cut longer pieces for um, this one because of the braiding, we'll, you know, that will take up some length. So I think I'm going to go with nine to start. Well, I, I'm going with nine and it better work because otherwise I'll have to start over. I think it should be plenty. You saw when I was trimming for a seven inch bracelet, um, which is not necessarily an average size. Maybe most people would go seven and a half or eight even, um, but I ended up cutting 
probably a total of two inches off of my cord so that we had plenty to work with when we started. All right, so I've got my three nine inch strands. Lisa Valentine is saying, is there a kit? No, not we do not do a kit for this um, this particular bracelet, but I have heard rumors that um, the bead gallery, Jamie's Bead Gallery in Honolulu made a kit for this design. And we totally should have. We Lisa. should make a kit because we've had so many people ask. So um, if you guys are looking, um, look how much of a looser fit this cord is on the on the two hole bars. That, yeah, that that wasabi spring was Jolly Rancher green did seem a little on the the thicker side of two mil. Mm -hmm. It's just a good thing to be aware of, you know, when you're um, designing with cord that there really can be some variation in the thicknesses but so i got my barrel bead on one side and my uh separator bar and i'm just going to start stringing on some buttons and because these ones you know the heart is a very specific little shape i may end up with the apple blossom buttons, I didn't have to adjust the position, the direction that I slid them on. They worked just fine how I got them on there. The hearts may be different. I'll have to see how it looks once they're on. I just love our uh, buttons being used for jewelry. Yeah, yeah, you mean uh, other than just um, button uh, closures. Yeah. Like focals. Yeah, it's um, the button is such a perfect broad flat surface for all of our great designs. Um, it, it's just some of the best designs are on buttons. So to be able to see them used as focals is awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to go ahead and crimp one of these, this barrel bead. So Joyce um, said that she's noticed that the colored um, leather is often thicker. I wonder if it's something in the coating. Oh, maybe the, the dye process and the coating. That's a good observation. Yeah, thanks Joyce. All right, I'm gonna give myself like three and a half inches on one side and go ahead and crimp this down because Things are just flopping around. This cord is really quite a bit um, smaller. So I, because it's flopping, everything's sliding around so much, I'm just gonna go ahead and crimp that. So it will, everything I'm sliding down the cord will stay in place better. That is the awesome thing about these crimpable parts. You can totally wrangle your projects. Yeah. By doing that. And then my separator bar for the other side. I think I'm liking the way these little hearts are gonna look. Super cute. And because they are, it's a looser fit, I'm gonna slide my, um, I'm just gonna make the whole focal area a little tighter so that they won't flop around too much. You can still see the hearts, you can still see the buttons. And worst case scenario, if I didn't like the way those were, those were flopping around, um, I would, when we're done, I would flip it over and just put some glue on the back. All right. I'm liking this one, it's kind of cute. I'm gonna go ahead and crimp the second one. That could be a great like Mother's Day bracelet for a mother that's maybe not into the frilly kind of hearts. I think that's a great idea. Oh, that's cute. 
All right, so now we're gonna um, experiment with the braiding. Um, let's see, I think this time I'll go with the um, seven and a half inch. So my point for, for saying that is I wanna make sure that I have at least three inches of braid on each side. Is that gonna give me a right size? Let's see. Well, we'll just try it. Let's see how it goes. My math skills apparently are just not real powerful this morning. It's a lot of demands, making oh, yeah. jewelry, talking, and doing yeah. that. Too, too many, too many things. Looking okay. I like the braided. Yeah, it's kind of fun, huh? Yeah. I did find um, when I was making this one that this black was quite stiff. Um, so I was hoping that when I was working with the brown that it would have a slightly softer feel and it definitely does. And I think maybe that's because it's one of the, what they call their, what Leather Cord USA anyway, calls their antique finishes and they're not, um, they're not coated or colored. Well, they've got to be colored, but they're just, it's not a, like a smooth finish. It's kind of a, a rougher and maybe that just different processing gives it a little more um, softness. I'm totally speculating. I could completely be off on that. So let's see. Inch and a half. So that means that my total bracelet length needs to be six inches, right? Yes. There's that math again. <laughs> two, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I need to end my braid right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And I'm gonna have to hold those ends so that I don't lose the last loop of the braid or the last um, twist. And then get that, get those tucked up into the crimp end. Oops. That's all right. A little bit of unevenness. I did end up like untwisting that last, that last little braid section. So, um, because it made it flatter and I needed it flatter to fit into the crimp end. Someone suggested that Joyce from Just Beat It and Concord should be making these kits. That could be someone smart. who shall remain nameless. And, um, <laughs> I think that'd be great. And so just Joyce has a, a great, used to have a store in Concord, just feed it. And she's doing online now. So mm -hmm. great, great resource for products. Well, and the good thing about um, our designs that we make available for our customers, any of our customers can make a kit out of this. I think it's um, possible that um, Irene is watching as well, Julie. Oh, yeah. Like Irene, Irene, Irene could jump on that too. Yeah, Irene has more ideas in her head than she has time to ever execute. I'll tell you that. Yeah, those buttons are not wanting to stay in place, are they? No, nope, I'm definitely going to glue these ones. Well, and also once you when you put it on your wrist, then you have that um, your wrist helps to keep them in place. That because these ones. The original, the Monstera, those aren't glued in place. But once you've got it on, you know, they stay unless, you're, unless your bracelet is super loose. But, um, but your um, gluing might be a good one for the, a good idea for this one. Now I'm wondering if you were to scrub, well, no, you've done that. Oops, you know what? I gotta make sure I'm looking at the right video going. If you scrunch those three millimeter spacers I mean, the three bead 
three strand, I'll get the words, three strand spacers really in tight on those beads, would it hold them? Um, yeah, I think it might hold it a little better, but again, the, they're sliding around. So okay. um, I could actually crimp those too. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's not a, it's not as logical of a thing to do, but I could go in here with my pliers and smash those down a little bit and that might keep them from sliding around a little bit. Okay, that is something I've never done. Really? I have seen that done. I can't say that I've used it a lot, but I've seen, or maybe I have and I'm just forgetting, but I have seen it done. <laughs> yeah. There's, you know how you just said Irene has too many designs. Yes. <laughs> I have done so many things that I just can't remember what I've done and what I haven't. <laughs> that is exactly why I was chuckling. I know that about you. You yeah. never, you sure are ne not never, but you often cannot remember the things that you've done because you have so many things. Like, did I make that? I don't know. <laughs> I might have done that. I've lost track of my braid and now I can't get it, get it. Uh, I have to start over again. You know much. how if you, when you're braiding something, if you lose track of which one goes next, it's like, what? Where was I? Absolutely. All right. Now, how much braid length did I need? A little over two inches. This braiding one is trickier with the measure, m measuring I'm finding. Do you ever just eyeball things, Tracy, or are you usually a measurer? No, I'm terrible. I'm, I'm eyeball. <laughs> terrible. We've talked about this. <laughs> no, I, I forget things too, on occasion. I'm like, yeah, that looks about right and sabotage myself horribly. Okay, Joyce is sharing that her and April are always asking each other, did I make this or did you? Right, exactly. See? <laughs> I am not alone. I know I crimped this other side, but um, I don't remember doing it. So I'm just going to give it another squeeze. OK, so that worked well, Julie, to just crimp that a little bit to hold that. Um, the three hole bar in place too. So I'm going to do it on the other side. I guess I can use the. Can well, you, after you crimp that, can you pull that up to the camera so we can get a good look of what that spacer bar looks like when it's crimped? Just kind of flattens. <clears throat> can you guys see that? <clears throat> other side. Let's get some light on it. It just kind of flattened the, you know, the nugget bead itself is a very round shape. Oh. And it just flattened it a little bit. Can you guys see it? It doesn't look like it did any real damage. Huge. It's not a huge. It's not a huge um, effect. Cool. Yeah. And when I, you know, I did see um, Jamie at the bead gallery um, do a demo of this. Actually, it wasn't Jamie. It was. Um, it was their other teacher there. Um, she demoed this bracelet, and they used the large, um, the large nugget spacer, and they curved it. Ah, so that it kind of framed the buttons. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, it's just a very good thing to remind uh, everybody that um, the TR cast, the pewter is very soft. It's mm -hmm. super strong, but you really can kind of manipulate it and yeah. make it bend to your will. Exactly. So now um, here we are with the, the ends are on, the beads are in place, and I could here go in when I'm completely done and just put a little bit of adhesive um, around the button shanks and the leather if I really wanted that those buttons to um, stay put. But you'd want to do that absolutely last and then just leave it alone. You know, um, adhesive likes its time to fully cure. So you'd want to do that very last and then leave it sit for like a day. And I used E6000 on this one, but you could probably use um, 
like your gel super glues as well. Should work fine. And again, with the one jump ring for the toggle ring and two for the bar. Oh, Caroline suggested um, putting a tiny dot of glue on the ends to hold them together. To hold the three ends when braided. Oh, hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a smart idea. She means down here before you tuck them into the um, ah. tuck them into the crimp ends. I, at least that's how I'm interpreting it. I, I lost my way as I was reading it mm. because you need the ends free to braid. Although there are ways to do it without the ends free. Hmm. Okay, that got way too complicated for my head. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's great. Look at all. Look at them. I know. Look, look, nice variations, huh? Yeah. So um. I loved experimenting to see what other buttons would work well for this. And I definitely recommend the, the apple blossoms. And um, the hearts, I think, came out really nice, too. And I, I do think that the irregular shapes um, are better. Perfectly round ones. I did not get on um, this version. I did not get them placed in a particularly pleasing um, arrangement when I glued them. So I think going forward with this design, I'll just stick with the stick with the irregular buttons. I think they worked well. Yeah. So that's it. Bravo. Thank you. I think I'll switch my camera back. So thanks, you guys. Is there any other comments or things we can respond to? Oh, people just love it and want a kit and are happy that people are thinking about it. I did mm -hmm. post a link for the project sheet. Mm -hmm. So your instructions. So yeah, anybody can download those. But um, no, I think we answered everything as we moved along. I think that we should consider a kit, um, but the reason we didn't do one to begin with for this design is because it was so metal heavy that we knew it would be a more expensive kit. So um, our MO with kits so far has always been to keep them at a low price point for our customers. So this one would be more, that's that's all there is to it. So, but I think we should still look at it. I think it's a good idea. Definitely, we, we were told from the moment we came out with that, um, well, we, but the moment you did that design, we've been asked for it. Right, right. So let's just put that to Kirsten and see what she says. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, okay. I see that Kelly um, from Kelly's Bee Boutique is with us and I just want to say hi, because I haven't seen her in a while. I did not see her. I see her name popping up in the comments. I see somebody. Oh, really? I think somebody just mentioned she could make a kit. Yep, yep, yep. Well, there she is. I do see her. Yes. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hope everything is going well. She said she could see a barrel not working. What does that mean? I mean, what you mean one of Kelly's famous barrel knots? Oh, that's obviously what Kelly's talking about. And maybe they mean in place of the, I'm sorry, I'm looking down at the, um, at the bracelets and assuming you guys can see them too. Obviously you can't, hold on. <laughs> no, Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique said she could see a barrel knot working in, uh, in the bracelets. In place of the barrel bead? Is I that what you're thinking? Kelly, Kelly should be chiming in right now and, and uh, helping us out because we're obviously lost. <laughs> I, I see that um, in terms of cinching the strands together, maybe a barrel knot would work there. I don't know. We'll leave that to Kelly to experiment with. Yeah, I, I think Kelly's gonna um, come to the rescue for all of these folks and let them know because we we don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> well, I, I totally know what she's talking about with the barrel knot. She's she's famous in the jewelry industry now for her barrel back, barrel knot. So, so is that just like a, 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 a knot? She would use the leather to create a knot. That would be the design element in it. Right. She would use a separate piece of leather to create a barrel knot around the three strands. At least that's how my brain is um, is interpreting it. So. Oh, I never called those barrel knots. I call those knotted beads, I think, is what I always call them. 
Um, she calls oh. them a brown knot. Yes, she's um, Marty Camp. Well, I think that's it. Um, I don't have any. I don't have it figured out yet what I'm going to do next week. But that's all for this week. So. So thank you, everybody. And um, I hope everyone has a great rest of your week. And I hope everyone um, stays well and healthy. And um, we'll, I'll post about next week's um, whatever we decide to do. I'll, I'll post that on Saturday. And um, hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Julie. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye.